Okay, Thursday morning in the kingdom and I'm taking a chance. I'm standing out in the middle of the yard because it's warm. Yes, it's warm here. We have minus 11 Celsius, but feels like minus 17. The me phone gets turned off or censors me at minus 10, so we're gonna take a chance. Yes, take a chance, take a chance on me. Ooh, who sung that? Ooh, that was ABBA, the Swedish band. Yes, and then there was rock set after that, and then Sabaton, the heavy metal rock and roll band. Okay, back to regular programming here. All right, so it's plus 12 Fahrenheit. See, I told you it's warm, but feels like plus one. Ooh, confusing. All right, so today is January 25th in Canada. Okay, all right. The Alaskan, oh, the Australian flag is right there. It is January 26th in Australia right now because they're one day ahead of us. You should have learned that on Crocodile Dundee, the films, yes, with Paul Hogan. Oh, yeah, <laughs> they kind of hate him or something. He had a bad rap with the Australian people. He did such good, you know, put another shrimp on the barbie and he got treated like crap, kind of like me. All right, so it's January 26th in Australia. Now it's their flag day. Oh, we went dark and light. I'm probably censored already. All right, it's probably snowing too. All right, so it's officially Australian flag day in Australia over there, which will be tomorrow here. All right, now that we're confused, all right, back to the regular schedule programming. Also too, with the paint drying in the, on the 38 GMC, because I painted on thick. Yes, I splash it on and paint it on thick like my ladies. I like full figured. All right, we'll be working on the D69U known as the Bismarck. See that? It's not very straight. All right, so we'll explain more on that later. Yes, knock, knock. Who's there? Ooh, it's Mr. Connecting Rod. All right. Also, too. Yes, the pallet of dog food came destroyed yesterday. All it takes is one person with no pride or, how would you say, confidence or whatever, pride in their workmanship or care about their job to destroy the pallet. Yes, and most likely they'll make him vice president of the company within six months because that's how management works. These guys are unreal. Oh, I better get off the soapbox on the management. I don't like management. All right, you can see there's no sun. There's nothing, it's overcast, icky day, and it's gonna snow. So I better hurry up here because the me phones probably censor me. It's going dark light, dark light. So that's the pre-warning, just like those stars on TV and on stage. When the lights start flickering, you got a problem. All right. Oh, the gong show. If they get that gong thing out and bong it, you're toast. Okay, probably somebody's already done that already. All right, there we go. Wood stove smoke for the Swedish kid. Well, we better go. Here comes the boss. Okay, the paint is still dripping off the grill shell for the 38 GMC. But then again, I painted it on thick, knowing that it's got to last, okay? And we got this truck in 1997 from my dad. He had it all primered, and it was sitting out back in the acreage with his 250 other, no, 249 other vehicles in his collection. This thing was, the motor was seized, and... The primer paint job that he hand sanded and took so much time in has started to surface rust. So the first thing we did when we got it was splash the paint on. So this original black paint is almost, ooh, geez, 27 years or something. Yeah, ooh, yeah, ooh, quick thinking. I didn't even watch Sesame Street this morning and I'm still able to do the math. All right, so we got the hood horn ornament there. I had it by the wood stove drying and it's still not dry. So we're going to have to put this project on hold for a couple of days. Also too, we're putting everything up high. Yes, that's up high because that's where the heat is when the fans are not running. We only run the fans when we're in the shop here. And then I put the sewer line up over there because it's nice and warm. Oh yes, and we can't forget the promo bike. Yes, $42,000 coffee table. Yes, and Facebook is reminding me. That on this day the build started or whatever and the memories oh yes i can feel oh oh i better not talk about it okay so now we can start on the bismarck yes the bismarck the snow is now melted off of here and i can see down in here where the clutch is yes down in there is the clutch and we have to take that all apart but let's first recap on the bismarck Okay, the two D6 cats were sunk together. The hood has the angle blade on it. We had it out the last weekend on Sunday, pulling the water truck up the hill. And the Bismarck went down second, just like in the Battle of the Atlantic, okay? 
And Sabaton has a really good video and song about the Bismarck. I think I'll include the link in the description so everybody can rock on too. It's got a good beat. Crank it up. Do your dishes. Party on. Drink your beer. That kind of stuff. All right. The hood went down. It was not running. So the engine, was, we just changed the, how do you say, drained out the oils and the sands and all that kind of stuff. Yada, yada. It wasn't a big deal. But the Bismarck went down running. So two of the connecting rods hydraulic. So that means water oops i'm hooked i'm hooked on the lily tomlin cord all right so water goes in the intake up here goes in and into the cylinder okay so the water fills the cylinder and then the piston comes back up and hits the water so then it still has momentum it bends the connecting rod but doesn't touch the liner yes the liner doesn't get damaged and the old timers back in the day, if they sunk a cat in the lake and they needed to get it home and the connecting rods were bent, there's always two that are bent. So what they would do was cut the connecting rod off here, bolt it together to have oil pressure to keep the bearings and everything so you got the crank and drive it home as a, how would you say, a four cylinder motor. It was quite common back in the day. All right, so today's project is we have to get into the bell housing here. All right, but we also have the hood. The, I mean, the wider hood with the windshield frame right up there. All right, so I went out this morning with the dogs. We got in a piece of pipe, and that pipe slides over top of the pipe. All right, let's try walking backwards at the same time, looking at the sky. I mean, the ceiling, yes. All right, so we've chained it here. All right, so that way I can still close the curtain. So on when I did three years ago, when I did the hood clutch, all right, I had the mini hoe in the old part of the shop and I was able to park the hoe about here and then reach over with the bucket to lift out the clutch or the bell housing, whatever. So I can't do that. So we got no room here. So we're gonna use the cane chain and block and everything. Also too, we do not disclose the history of these machines, okay? This machine was in Whoville here. It went to Elford and it came back and that's all we're talking about, yes. I drank beer with the old timers that own these machines. They told me the history, the yada yada. We had good times, drank some beer and some Crown Royal. But it's the family. The greed of the family makes me stop talking about any history of these machines and stuff like that. Because it's the family with their greed. Yes, oh, I know all about greed. So anything, if you ask me about the history of these machines, I don't talk about the history, okay? They're in the kingdom, they're here and welcome to the new world where it's the family screws up the past even if the old timer was a great man did lots of great things we can't talk about it because of the family and the greed okay talking about greed here we have the complete history of the 38 gmc right to the day my dad bought it and from the fellow he bought it from i have all the receipts the pictures the documentation and everything like that we don't talk about it because the fellow my dad bought it from is an asshole so he's still alive and we will not give him credit or any work he did before my dad got it and that's the way it is welcome to the new world where everyone's greed and being assholes those you know that's ruins everything in the good old days we could give the people credit for this stuff say hey i bought it from cousin eddie it was the greatest truck cousin eddie did all this work but in the new world we live in today it gets turned all around and it's nothing but drama so I spoke my mind. The fellow that my dad got this truck from was an asshole. He's still an asshole. Oh, and I bought my 37 Dodge hot rod truck from him. It's well documented. He's an asshole. Okay, just about lunchtime in the kingdom and I got my first good excuse to have a good drink. Okay, so to get the clutch pedals off or the brake pedals off, this thing here supports the front of the transmission. It bolts down in here, which is no big wow. And then it bolts across the transmission. All right, so these are the bolts here so you got this shaft here and to get the shaft out if i remember correctly it can't go this way can't go that way whatever it's just a pain in the ass remember i have four of these so i've learned all over the years so you have to sit here with an open end wrench and turn them little by little and you can't use the closed end because you're in traffic and you got to make sure that the bolts stay underneath that rod okay when you go to install it and stuff because you'll never get the thing back in because there's enough slop in the rod and when it's out of position or on the workbench the bolts will fit back in also too in theory here let's watch that 
Okay, in theory, since how we're taking this all apart, we should just reach in here and change the input seal on the transmission. Wrong. That's a one piece shaft that goes into the transmission, all right? IH cats have a nut. You take the yoke off, change the seal, all right? But not Caterpillar. To change that seal in the transmission, the input shaft seal, you remove this transmission that goes back to here. You lift it out, okay? And then you put it on the workbench and you removed three shafts, all the gears, to get that shaft out so you can change a seal. Yeah, so you're looking at like a three day job. So anytime we do work on these things, you know, if it was summertime, it's a lot easier to yank the motor out, okay? Just yank the motor out. You're fixing other things while you're in the process. But we decided we're going to leave the motor in and work away at it this way, just like I did the D69U, what, three years ago, known as the hood, because it's a learning curve for everybody watching us on these videos and the pictures. Plus, I have a good excuse to be drunk. Yes, by the time this uh, clutch comes out at the end of the day, I'd probably be so drunk I won't be able to walk. Oh, the joys. Okay, just about copy time in the kingdom, man. I got a good excuse to drink. Okay, so we came out here after lunch. I haven't drank yet because I got to stay focused and make this video so everybody around the world knows how to work on Caterpillar equipment. Like, don't cry, give up, and, you know, give it away. Keep going. All right, so your air cleaner will not have the closed end fit. Yeah, so here you are trying to get this bolt. You only have a little bit of movement. You're using your open end. So that's reason number two on this project, to drink. All right, so over here, okay, down here, the U-joint goes down in there. Okay, so in most real worlds, everybody else does it. You undo the U-joint and the shaft slide back and out comes Mr. U-joint but not in the caterpillar world. You take it apart. Then you take the cuffs off. And then the bolts are long enough that they can't slide out, right? So the bolts have to stay in the cup. You're fighting with that. Everything, and the thing is, is you're trying to turn the U-joint so you can get the bolts out and stuff like that. So you end up splitting it off of the joiner thing. And then you end up taking the uh, clutch brake band, okay, drum off the... Well, you joint anyways, it has to come off anyways. So this is one hour to do this. Okay, you can see all the bolts have to come out and then you gotta take the cups off and you don't want them to get them dirty because we don't have a brand new U-joint to put back in here. And this is a better quality than anything we'd buy and put in. So you have to work slow, steady, and take your time. So that was one hour. So let's see, two U-joint things taken apart plus the third ring here. We'll say that's three drinks right there. Okay, the next reason to have a drink, the me phone is uh, acting up on frickin' real. So here I am working on 70 or 80 year old technology, trying to record it with today's technology, and today's technology is pissing me off more than the old school technology. Oh, well, another reason to have a drink. All right, so now that you get your U joint and everything out, make sure you mark it. I don't know if you can see it, but there's lots of red paint down there. Mark everything because Caterpillar makes it so it only goes together one way. All right. Oh. Gotta get out my cord, my cord, my cord. All right, so we're back. Okay, down here, there's a bolt. You thread it in, it's three eighths. Make sure you chase the, uh, the threads out, oil them, and then screw it in, because you don't want to jam things up. And just above it is the dowel pin. So when you reassemble it, put lots of never sees on it, because the dowel pin is tight, it rusts and makes it hard to come apart. So after coffee, when this oil is done leaking out of the bottom here, Yes, it's leaking out because I can't get the drain plug out because there's the stump pans on. Oh, then we'll lift this cover off to expose the clutch and everything. Hopefully things go better. Okay, after coffee in the kingdom and we got the flywheel cover thingy bob hooked up and we have it hooked up here. All right, this is not certified or anything like that. So please don't try this at home unless you've been drinking. Yes, hold my beer. But this is the way we're going to do it. And... Right now, it's jiggle and wiggle, jiggle and wiggle, because we have to get the plate that slides into the flywheel to come out, and that's basically the clutch part, okay? We have this book here. I don't know. It's kind of like Captain Jack Sparrows and the Pirates of the Caribbean, 
the pirates book it's kind of like guidelines it really doesn't show anything tell you anything or whatever it's just for guidelines it gives you ideas and how to do things all right let's get this clutch out because it's just about the end of the day and we have lots of drinking to do okay the struggle was unreal so another beer another drink okay so the problem i had was you tie the clutch plate there to the bell housing flange thing the rope wasn't holding it like i had to suck it in tight so i ended up putting a threaded rod with an angle iron across the hole there kind of boogered plasma cut it but that's the whole idea and it's tight like you're fighting with it to keep it straight to get it up but out and that shaft has to be all the way in to get by the input shaft of the transmission then once you get past it you push it out to clear back here all right so in theory the staff should be here any time now and we come along it up a bit more and then we roll it or jiggle it across the windshield so it can be set on the fender here and then we can work on it in theory thursday morning in whoville and it's just after 7 30 a.m and as you can see it started to snow it's actually been like this most of the night since it was pretty warm yesterday i knew it was going to snow now it's time to head inside let the dogs out make breakfast and get ready for work just after 8 30 and i'm getting ready to head to work as you can see it's not snowing anymore but i wonder how long that will last let's let the dogs back in and get going to work i'm not sure what i'll be doing there today maybe subbing or i'll be in ea Almost one o'clock and I'm just heading back to work now. It was a good lunch. The dogs are outside. It's actually warming up right now, so I don't have to wear my toque or my winter jacket to work, but I will bring it because I'm sure it'll be snowing when I get off at 3.45. Now let's head on up to work. 4 p.m. and I just made it home from work. It was actually a pretty good day. I just helped out in grade one. It was only a few kids, so it was pretty easy. Tomorrow is only a half day, so I just work until lunch and then I can do some stuff in the kingdom if needed. Now it's time to get the skidoo out and head on over to the kingdom and see what my dad's up to. Just after 4 p.m. and I made it to the kingdom. Perfect timing too. My dad's just lowering down the clutch, as you can see here. He has a nice little setup going on, very safe as well, so nothing will drop on him, because the last thing we want is him getting hurt. Now that the clutch is out, he can work on it. I'll get inside here for you guys. Look at all that room to work with. Now that it's out as well, he can tinker around with it and see what's wrong. Didn't take us very long, we were able to get the clutch moved over to the workbench here. My dad has enough to do today, so he will start on this tomorrow with his nice cold Budweiser. Now I can head inside, and I have to go put some boards on one of the boxes out there, because our dogs keep chewing on them, so we have to board that up before it gets really bad and we can't fix the problem. 5 o'clock and I'm just finishing up in the kingdom. I had to grab my dad's laundry as well. I didn't grab any dog treats because it's so warm out that my dogs aren't eating anything. So now we'll head on back into Whoville, get a fire going, and do the weather. A little after 5 and I just made it back from the kingdom. Now it's time to put the skidoo away, let the dogs out, and get a fire going. I'm not sure what I'll make for supper. Probably just some leftovers or something like that. I had a pretty long day so I don't really feel like cooking, but let's head inside. Six o'clock, I'm in the basement getting a fire going. I threw in a couple toothpick trees and some core boxes. This is just my little starting fire. Once it burns down, I can add on a few more. Now it's time to head upstairs, let the dogs back in because I can hear them crying out there and do the weather. Supper time and this is the temperature we're sitting at today. It's negative seven degrees Celsius, which is 19 degrees Fahrenheit. We even have the feels like on the bottom. It is extra warm today and it was snowing this morning, but not anymore. I'm sure with how warm it is, we'll get some more snow and that'll be good for us. So we can do some filming and a few other things. Now it's time to head inside and make supper and end my day. Okay, the staff showed up perfect timing. We got this carried to the workbench. Yes, she's a strong girl. Yes, all right. Okay, so tomorrow, I'll explain what we're doing here. There's pieces missing in here that I knew nothing of and I'll show you guys in the parts book and everything like that. But we'll talk about this because a lot of people don't know anything about it. And as you can see, we have some wear and tear here, okay? And that's from the missing pieces. But we'll talk about that tomorrow because I've worked enough and had enough stress that I can drink enough today. So if I save this for tomorrow, I'll have an excuse to drink.
Okay, the little beam here worked out pretty good. It's not within safety codes or anything like that, but we have to work safely up here. Plus, we drink a lot. So if we get hurt, it's a three-hour plane ride to the south where we get the good drugs. So we try not to get hurt and just keep drinking. All right, so down here, these are the original clutch discs and everything from being underwater for three years. We didn't do anything. We just basically changed things around, put it back together. Oh, and called it good. So I got my paint marker out, and we'll change things around, get it apart so we can film tomorrow. Oh, the hand and eye coordination is uh, not that good. Maybe we should gonna have to listen to more Sabaton rock and roll music tonight and drink more beer. Okay, I just wasted two hours of my life, and now I know why I drink. Yes, I never drank till I owned a caterpillar cat. Yes on freaking real see all these tools we had everything out here we might as well have gone to the house and got the kitchen sink simple thing this is the pilot bearing or whatever that goes into the flywheel all right so after 70 years of use it gets pitted right there can you see the pitties all right can you see that can you feel that last nestman all right so it's in oh there's the pits that's better can we see that all right so this bearing sits in here and what happens is when the clutch is idling or whatever, whatever, it bounces, it rattles, okay? So this thing should be easy. So in the cartoon book, like I mentioned, it's the guideline book, like the Pirates of the Caribbean, shows you reaching in, and I don't know if there's just enough to she here, but there's just a little wee, I don't know, a couple nose hairs thickness or width to grab. So I took the puller, pulley puller pull okay and modified it to fit all right and the tape there is to keep it expanded as you're holding it out and there's not enough meat there to grab okay so then we get the hobart handler 100 and i cranked it up to two volts and 30 uh wire speed and no problem layer it up layer it up layer it up and then there's enough for the puller to grab just on what i booger welded there so then you're pulling on it and it won't come out. Yes, it won't come out. You know why? I'll stop the video and get down there because I'll probably trip and fall. Okay, it wouldn't come out because I thought it was the tin uh, locking guards or whatever there. So I got the die grinder out there and just buffed around, got rid of the tin. But no, where the bolt comes to a point and if it's anywhere near that race, the point it won't get past the point so i'm not going to die grind the point off the bolt right so i had to break all the bolts loose and you can't take them out because there's no guide pins for the flywheel it'll fall off into the oil there so i had to back them all out so the torque specs everything's wrong on freaking real so i had to line up all the bolts so the flat side was to the bearing and then it would go past like on freaking real and the long time saying with the old timers is caterpillar the mechanic for caterpillar fooled around with the engineer's wife they had an affair so the engineer payback was to screw everything up make it impossible to work on as payback for the mechanics having an affair with his wife on freaking real okay seven o'clock in the kingdom i remember to plug in the yard light yes what a stressful day maybe that's why it took me two years to actually do the clutch on the d69u known as the bismarck it was going to be stressful but now i have jack daniels and titty vodka to make it through all right let's check on the flags everybody seems to be happy even the australian flag look at him go he's at the end there for the new viewers that's the australian flag over there all right let's go drink and try to forget and overcome working on the caterpillar cat no wonder i drink yes oh well maybe i'll relax and watch uh, a movie with boobies too oh and then tomorrow i gotta work on it some more maybe i could call in sick because i've been drinking too much all right let's go walk the dogs drink some beer and make a video talk to you later